Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Today is Friday, and we've had an amazing week. I don't know what you think, but you see, God's love is so great, and, and, and He keeps generating that love in us every day on this broadcast. He keeps generating it and generating it. And, and you, you, you only need to take advantage of it. I, I wonder how you go without watching this broadcast every day. Because every day I'm here to speak to you and to bring the mind of God to you. And there is a blessing contained in every message. So I'll encourage you this weekend, go listen to it from Monday. Listen Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Today, listen again. And receive that thing that God wanted you to get. Praise God. Are you ready for our delivery? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, yes, we're praying to the Father. I demand from you my daily bread. And I ask so that my joy will be full to me. And I receive it from your hands, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll ask you this question because it came to my heart while we're praying. What will it take now? You're watching me. What will it take for your joy to be full? Think. Now, now, right now. What will it take? Now, though, you see, the, the, the mistake a lot of people have is they are empty. Very empty. I, I just made a comment now. I just asked the question. What will it take for your joy to be full right now? And, and you know what you just, a lot of people just begin to think of. Let me not say a lot of people. Some people, let me give you the benefit of that. You're not part of them. Ah, God, can I just get 10 million there and now? No. That's not what you need for your joy to be full. Because that 10 million naira in your hands right now can lead you to sorrow. Because you really didn't need it. You just feel, if I say I'm a lot of 10 million naira, like, man, I will, I will. Really nothing. Nothing concrete, but you end up wasting that money. But look at your life in truth and in sincerity. What would you need now? that will make your joy to be full. Can you think of it? Someone, it might be Lord, if you just take this pain from my head right now. Someone, it can be Lord, my house rent is due. If I can just, now you see, if that house rent is paid right now, man, my joy will be full. That's valid. See, it, it connected with finances, but then it's clear. Not just carrying money. I mean, God doesn't give money. He meets needs. And he's perfect at meeting needs. And meeting needs sometimes he to require him giving you money. See? But you see, he's meeting that need. And people have made these mistakes. They prayed for a need to be met. God put money in their hands to divert the money. It's wrong. It's a sin. And it's a sin against the angel. And God has said, if you sin against God, God will forgive you. But if you sin against the angel, you remember when he was sending Moses and the children of Israel, he said, see that angel, he will not forgive you. So there are times God sends an angel to bring good things for us. And you now divert that thing. You can say, hey, ah, come on now. May God give you wisdom and understanding of his kingdom and how he operates. So going back, what really do you need for your joy to be full now? Can we release our faith right now and ask God for it? No long story, no much grammar. Just ask God for it. Say, Father, if you will just give me this now, it will cause my joy to be full. Yeah, 
go ahead and ask the Lord. And I stand as the servant of God right now. And I declare that thing you have asked the Lord for, it is done. In Jesus' name, praise God. Amen. Now, all these things that, that happen on this program, please do well to share your testimony. We, we really, really would love to hear from you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So I feel good. I just want to get married. <laughs> it's done. It's done. And watch out. What? Just watch out what's going to happen. Yeah. Because it's genuine. You need to get married. It's genuine. And it's in line with God's wisdom. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, glory, glory, glory. We, we were looking at something yesterday. And we're going to take it up from there. Um, in our team scripture, remember we're talking about the spirit of boldness. And, and, and our team scripture is in Acts chapter um, 4 from verse 29. Okay, And then I was showing you something yesterday. The disciples asked God for boldness. The disciples asked God for boldness and he gave them boldness. And then I was showing you yesterday that they, they asked because they asked the Father because Jesus said, on that day, see, I'll show you plainly who the Father is. And then you will get to realize that when you pray, when you ask, in my name, I won't be the one to say, I'll pray the Father for you. That's why, you know, I remember last week also I was telling you, this is why we don't pray through Mary. This is why we don't pray through any saints of God. We don't say, oh, St. Peter, pray for me. Or Mary, pray for me. No, you don't need that. You don't. Even Jesus said, you don't say, Jesus, please pray for me. He said, no, you don't. Why? Because the Father himself loves you. And how do you know the Father loves you? Because now you are plainly beginning to know who the Father is. So Jesus was saying, you will get to know who the Father is. And when you know who the Father is, you will ask in my name. And you will not be waiting for me. Jesus, I'm waiting for you. When will you see him? No! He said, because the Father himself loves you and he he wants to give you everything you need so that your joy may be full now let me show you something in john chapter 17 and that was in john chapter 16 maybe i should just read it then but john chapter 16 and verse let me 24 again say he that do have you asked nothing in my name ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full these things have i spoken unto you in proverbs but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. And in that day you shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me, and I believed that I came out from God. Now let's go to John chapter 17. This is Jesus praying to the Father. I love this. This is my best chapter in the Bible because it reveals a whole lot. Now let's look down to verse. Come on, yeah, come on. Verse 23. Ah, come on, the brain. Okay, let's start from verse 22. Jesus was talking to God. He wasn't minding anybody. It's just him and his father having a fantastic conversation. And these are the things he said in verse 22. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Brothers and sisters, Jesus literally was saying that I hand over my glory to them so that they will come into the glory of us. You gave me this glory and that glory made me one with you. Now I, in turn, am releasing that glory to them. Why? So they become one with us. 
This is not talking about unity as coming together to say, oh, we worship one God. Let us all walk in unity. Let's not abuse one another. No. This is structure, nature, oneness. We, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If you have seen the Father, you have seen me. If you've seen Jesus, you have seen the Father. If you've seen the Father, you've seen Jesus. If you've seen me, you've seen Jesus. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen me. That's the oneness. Watch this now. I'll take it again from verse 22. John chapter 17. And the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. That, Ayomana, Kalia Sabar Adene, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and has loved them as thou has loved me. I am. When you read this, you ask yourself, why am I living like this? Truly. Why is my life this way? Really, why? <laughs> Jesus said here that the world may know. It's a prayer request. Not the angels may know. The world. The world. The world. Not the world. The sinful people? Yes. You mean the world? Yes. All the people in the world, yes. Jesus is saying, Father, I want the world to see them and know. It's not by you telling them. Everybody listen, you know, God loves me the way he loves Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. The same way he said, I will show you plenty of the Father. I will cause things to happen that will make you, that will make you realize who the Father is. Now he says, that's the world. I'm giving you, I'm giving them the glory the same way you gave me the glory. Now I'm praying that the world may know that you have sent me. And it didn't stop them. And that when the world see them by their works and their actions, the world will recognize and realize that you, Father, have loved them as you have loved me. Do you think the Father ever answered this prayer? Or do you think this prayer was just for the early apostles? Brothers and sisters, we are in the season of the fulfillment of this prayer. See, our lives, that's where the wrong teaching is very bad. Oh, Jesus has fulfilled the law, so we don't need to fulfill the law. Wrong. Wrong. Anything Jesus fulfilled, he, make, he became our example to show us how we, our lives, living by the Holy Ghost, will fulfill that thing also. So you read this, and you look at the disciples, how that some men looked at them and said, how come these guys know so much? Haven't never learned. And someone reminded them. They've been with Jesus. Oh, I see. Mm, no wonder. They said the same thing about Jesus. Where did you get all these teachings from? Then he understood that. Oh, God just loves you specially. So he, 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 he gave you all these things. Because Nicodemus went to Jesus and said, no man can do these things except God. And Nicodemus wasn't speaking his mind. Nicodemus was part of the, the council, okay? 
So he was speaking the mind of the council. They discussed this thing. And, and so he came to Jesus personally with that realization. He said, no man can do these things except God be with him. Actually, except God loves him. So you see the disciples of old, Peter, the early disciples, they too got to that place where the world looked at them and said, it's because of Jesus. God loves these people. The same way God loves. Because they are doing the same thing Jesus would have been doing if he was here. Now, they had fulfilled their part. It doesn't mean this scripture has been fulfilled and, and closed. No, sir. If the same spirit that was working in them that made them to fulfill this is working in us, then we too, the world must look at us. I'm not saying we go tell you, you must look. No, the world will look at us by the workings of the spirit in us and his glory be made manifest. In us. The world will look at us and say, hmm, God loves you. God loves them the same way he loved Jesus. So this is still open. Jesus made the request of love that the world may know, that the world may know that thou hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Brothers and sisters, it wasn't a question. Jesus was not praying, Father, love them the same way you love me. No. Jesus was saying, it, it, it is settled fact that God loves us. That was not a question at all. It's settled. Now Jesus is saying, Father, I want the world to know. Jesus wants the world to know that God loves you the same way he loved him, Jesus. So the world must know. The world must know. But do you know? Have you come to terms with that truth that you are loved the same way Jesus is loved? Have you gotten to that point of understanding? And the Lord is speaking of boldness. This is the root of our boldness. I know God loves me the same way he loves Jesus. I know that's not a question. Now he wants the world to know. Now, I, I'll not be hiding this love in my heart anymore. I, I'll begin to walk in boldness, doing everything he wants me to do. And, and as I begin to do all those things, guess what? Alamaka shalebada tezishu. I see someone watching me. I, I just hear the Lord say this. You're building your house within one year. Yes, you are building your house within one year. And it's going to be a marvel to many. It's going to be a marvel to me. But guess what? That's how God is going to demonstrate his love to you. And everyone will know. They've called you nobody. They've called you small. It doesn't look like it. So it's not like you've been saving some money for it. But within one year, count from this month of November, by November next year, you will be living in your house that you built. And I'm not talking about one knocking off wood or putting blocks together. It, the house that is in your heart, you have a picture in your heart you will be living in that house by November next year. That's what the Lord said I should tell you. He is demonstrating his love to you. And he is doing it for the world to see. That's the request Jesus made. And, 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 and do you know, hallelujah, hallelujah. I come, all kinds of medical conditions are being healed right now. I see a lady, you had this meeting with the doctor and the doctor said, there's something about um, your womb that you will not be able to give birth or carry a pregnancy. So you, you, you better start thinking of other options if you want to have a child. Yes, even that doctor, he's an unbeliever. He's, he's, he's not even in Nigeria, he's a foreigner. God wants that doctor to know that he loves you the same way he loves Jesus. So you're going to carry that pregnancy and you are going to deliver in that same hospital. 
and the doctor will know. And when he asks, you will say to him, because God loves me the way he loves Jesus. All kinds of miracles are happening in your life right now. But be bold. Are you ready to be bold about it? Because when God does things in your life, you're not going, hey, I don't want anybody. You are going to be loud and bold about it. Praise God. Oh, glory to Jesus. Thank you, Father. We just give you praise. We give you praise. And fulfill your word in our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man. Hey, I'll see you on Monday. Have the most fantastic weekend in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye.